on Behind the Faith. Well, welcome back to the Faith Dome. It's exciting to be in here once again. And what a beautiful space we have and what an awesome angle. I think that was the biggest thing for us as a ministry, as a church, was to immediately connect with our members and stay connected. Maybe this pandemic is a serious issue, mm. but the reality is, is that the religious community is seemingly being treated with a very different standard by government than other sectors of the community. Come be a part of this. Well, from the banks of the Buffalo River, on behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny Rabert, welcome to an exciting episode of Behind the Faith, and it's great to have each and every single one of you joining us today. Tando, an incredible time once again for us to be right here on Behind the Faith. Hey, listen, this is our beautiful East London, South Africa, and it is really exciting to be able to bring you all that is happening in and around the Faith Family of Networks from right here in the Buffalo City. We love this place. We are so grateful to God for this place. And listen, God has been doing amazing things through all of our platforms right here on the Faith Family of Networks. Well, you know, the incredible thing is we're in this beautiful town. It's a quaint town of East London. People wonder what good can come out of East London. Let me tell you something. Faith Broadcasting Network, Faith TV is right here in East London, South Africa. The incredible thing is, Tando, people can watch the channel on multiple platforms on television like DSTV, GoTV. And how incredible it is we have a platform where we can go digitally into the nations. Listen, there are multi-millions being reached right here through, I mean, through DSTV and GoTV right here in sub-Saharan Africa. And I know so many people are not just watching through the traditional television, but they're also streaming, they're using the app, they're using our website, it's phenomenal, but really that platform right here on Faith Africa is an amazing one. And the feedback we continue to receive of families who are receiving breakthrough, of families whose lives are set free by the power of Jesus through this network is just phenomenal. But right. Africa is being touched and changed for the glory of God. You know, Tanda, the beautiful thing is even within our local community, we've been able to actually have a platform yeah. right here called Faith Terrestrial. Now, Faith yeah. Terrestrial is the oldest Christian television station in the entire continent of Africa. How incredible is that? And what a platform. It's part of the dual illumination process of going digital in South African television. It is also still on analog in places like Butterworth, Mount Elif, Ngangelizwe, and various other places within the Eastern Cape region. So it reaches into homes, not just digitally, but still on the analog platforms, and we're still touching each and every single person's lives. You know, I was in a conversation with one of the people from our distributors yeah. uh, with Marinda and she was telling me about how the distribution of, of, of digital boxes into homes within rural communities is expanding and many more people will be able to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right, I mean, life is not necessarily as rural Africa as we would we once imagined it, but right now there's really an entire wave of just making sure that everyone is reached with the gospel of Jesus. Isn't that incredible? You know, that's what's incredible, and that's what we love and what we enjoy with this faith family of networks. We're reaching into the homes digitally and on analog, so every single person can hear the message of faith and the gospel of Jesus Christ because of each and every single one of you, our partners. Listen, talking about partners, Tando. I think let's go into the dome and uh, find out what's happening in there. Well, welcome back to the Faith Dome. It's exciting to be in here once again. And what a beautiful space we have and what an awesome angle we have looking at this beautiful, incredible facility. And it's just a place where we know the presence of God is going to be emanating from into the nations of the world. And you are a part of this incredible venture right here at the Faith Family of Networks. Welcome to the Faith Dome. Tando, it's great to be here once again and how incredible it is to be in this space as well. 
Listen, I, I, it's, it's almost hard to believe every single time walking into this place, knowing the very plans and purposes of God for this place. So that's really exciting. And the amazing thing, obviously this week is a lot has happened, but a little undercover. Why don't you brief us on that? Well, you know, Tanda, the incredible thing is that most people might look behind us like, wait, but we can't see anyone behind us. Well, a lot of the team is actually working underneath the raker seating and a lot of the people are working outside and just just putting together every single thing that's required for the dome. It's like Tanda, one thing that most people don't yeah. see right now, you know, I love the word. It says certain things are hidden things. Mm -hmm. And one of the hidden things is the fire suppression system team is working very hard under the raker seating itself, actually preparing that system underneath from that side. And how incredible it is to know that we are taking uh, security and safety at such a high regard. Absolutely, and obviously this entire facility has been built not only to house the presence of God and the people of God who are going to soak in here in the powerful presence of God, but everything is done with excellence. There's compliance that has to be done and we're making sure everything is underway. So thank you to every single one of you who've been a part of this project from the very beginning. It's so nice knowing really as part of the office staff how people are continuing yeah. to sow into the project, continuing to pray for the project. Project, continuing to speak life into the project and thank you thank you thank you to every single person listen faith dome is the place to be if you want to connect maybe you have never done it before maybe you want to do it again simply go to the website myfaith.tv and you'll find all the information as to how you can participate and be a part of this great glorious faith dome project that's right, Tando. It's an incredible project where so many people can connect with, yeah. with the word of the Lord. So thank you for each and every single one of you, you for connecting with us, for praying, for sowing into this vision. You know, it's just so incredible that even as people have prayed for this vision, we've experienced such incredible favor. So thank you to each and every single one of our faithful partners and you who's about to become a partner in this incredible project in the Faith Dome. So what an incredible time we had in the in the dome tundra. What an exhilarating and amazing facility that is. Listen, I love everything that continues to happen in the dome. I love watching every little thing, every little piece of construction come together. Because I mean, it's a lighting phase, it's a fire suppression phase. I love seeing all those things come together for the glory of God. You know what, talking about the glory of God, how incredible that we've got amazing programmers on the network. Now, people have to look out for this week. It's going to be incredible. Brother Kenneth Copeland on Believer's Voice of Victory. Don't forget to catch that program Monday to Friday at 8 a.m. as well as 4.30 p.m. as well as Sundays at 7 p.m. You have to catch that. Kenneth Copeland, the word of faith, and it just comes out of his mouth, Tando. It's so incredible and amazing. Listen, the incredible thing with that program is obviously you've seen um, Brother Kenneth Copeland with various guests. You've also seen Sister Gloria Copeland. You've seen um, Pastor George Pearsons. You have just seen Jeremy Pearsons on the program and Sarah Pearsons. Every single person who is part of the Believer's Voice of Victory family, it is the family of faith at large. So that's pretty incredible and it's so nice because you see not only programming that's done on the set word-based teaching but you find so much content even from the conventions that some people might may or may not have had an opportunity to be a part of but you don't want to miss believers voice of victory 8 a.m and 4 30 p.m every single weekday as well as sundays at 7 p.m central african time you know tando that's so exciting then we have pastor edgar holder all the way from holland an incredible and powerful preacher of the word and you can catch his program every Saturday at 8 a.m. right here on the Faith Family of Networks on those platforms we spoke about and Tando it's amazing we've got new programmers as well we sure do all the way from Holland to 
to the United States of America. There is By Faith with Frank Shelton, a new programmer coming onto the network starting this Saturday at 7 a.m. It is going to be electric. And talking about programming, you decided to sneak off and have a Zoom interview with Pastor Jacques van der Westezen from the program Prophetic Encounter. He is based in Cape Town, a lead pastor of Revival Worship Center, also known as RWC. So let's go ahead, everybody, and take a look at that. Well, it is an honor and a privilege to have joining me today a preaching machine, a man all the way from Cape Town, Prophet Pastor Jacques van der Westezen. Welcome to the catch-up session right here on Behind the Faith. Thank you so much. I, I really, it's such an honor to be with you. Uh, it, you guys, you know, you and your lovely wife are such a blessing and such an encouragement to us, to many viewers. And we just love to, to hear you and, and be with you. And, and even this moment now, just to be with uh, the precious viewers as well. I just greet each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Well, Pastor Jacques, it's great to have you, as I mentioned already, but let's quickly jump into it. How have things been at the Revival Worship Center, considering the climate that we are in currently? So what have you guys been up to as a ministry and as a church? Well, I think I can speak, you know, for, for many of us in ministry, pastors, leaders of churches, it was something, you know, unusual. Uh, something that was never, I think, uh, never, you know, prepared for. Nobody prepared for this. And uh, so we had to quickly, you know, think on our feet and uh, just draw from the wisdom of God. And for us, you know, we immediately just stepped into uh, connecting with the people. I think that was the biggest thing for us as a ministry, as a church, was to immediately connect with our members and stay connected and use whatever means we had available to connect with them and um, and to just make sure that they don't feel disconnected or feel um, alone or deserted in the time. Of course, it was quite a challenge and, and a difficult for us as pastors uh, not to be able to get to our members at a certain point during the lockdown. But you know, for me, I, um, I've, I really believe that we have the ability through prayer, through intercession, as, as men of God, as pastors or apostolic ministries, whoever is the head of the church mm. of, of that specific congregation, we have a responsibility to pray for the people, to intercede for them, and to pastor the people through prayer as well. And that's what I did, but I spent a lot of time in prayer for the congregation mm. and for the members of the church and just covered them through prayer, really entrusted, you know, and asked the Holy Spirit just to keep the church uh, united and comforted, strengthened, and just brought the people's needs before God, you know, and apart from that, kept communicating and speaking, uh, whether it was through voice notes or email, Whatever communication we could do, and then of course live streaming, as you know, mm. uh, many people had to adjust to live streaming, and uh, thankfully we were prepared for that for a number of years we've been on online, but but still, you know, it, I think a lot of the, uh, the members of the church weren't really that prepared uh, for online, so they had to adjust to that yeah. and get their things sorted out. But eventually it started to fall in place and our online Sunday services became uh, just very powerful online. You know, we could see the connection of the people coming in, the feedbacks, the reports, the testimonies. And I think that that carried people uh, through this time. Sure. You know, Pastor Jacques, what's, it's so amazing you're talking about that online and media connection because you're also obviously a programmer. Um, having the program Prophetic Encounter. But Pastor Jacques, let's quickly talk about the program. Um, what can we expect over the next couple of weeks uh, to receive from Prophetic Encounter right here on Faith Africa? Well, you know, the, as you say, the, the program, the name of the program is Prophetic Encounter. And really my uh, burden or responsibility, if I can call it that way, not in a bad way, but in a good way, but in a spiritual burden, mm. a responsibility. What I sense is to hear what the Lord is saying and then speak that. 
Mm. My prayer and desire is for all our viewers that uh, connect and that watch the Prophetic Encounter program. I want them to have a prophetic encounter. Yeah. I want them to have a rhema word of God come to them, a word from the Spirit. And I, I want them to be able to take that word and then put it in their heart or mouth and use that mm. as a, a sword of the Spirit yeah. in which to do warfare, in which to, you know, stand um, by faith. Sure. And it's of that word. So in the coming weeks, in the coming months uh, that lie ahead, they can expect to receive specific, you know, specific prophetic words mm. and, um, and signals that I sense in my heart, my spirit for us now in this time. Sure. So I, I, the prophetic encounter program, uh, you know, it's not really, I would say there is a part of it is teaching, a part of it is preaching, but really, it's a prophetic uh, program. So yeah. what is the spirit saying to us now? Yeah, that's what I want to read. And that's so that's what's coming in the coming weeks and months. I want to encourage the viewers to stay connected uh, to watch the, 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 you know, the prophetic encounter broadcast and come with that expectation. Yeah, it's good. of I want to hear something from the spirit. You know, I don't want to just hear a sermon. What is the spirit saying? It's good. Sure. Well, Pastor Jacques, I am looking forward to that, and that was an inc that's an incredible thing to look forward to, and a hunger to come expectant and hungry for what God wants to do. Well, Pastor Jacques, thank you for your time. I understand that you are also an incredible busy, busy man, ministry all around the world, a family man as well. So thank you so much yeah. for joining us on this catch-up session. Oh, thank you, Pastor Bunny. Love you and bless you and Thanks to Dr. Andre and Jenny as well and the FBN Network, all the partners. We love you and we pray for you. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Jacques. That's Pastor Jacques von der Vestesen on Prophetic Encounter. So take a look. God will cast the mantle, but it's up to us to catch it and to go after it. Everything seemed normal until Elijah passed by him and threw the mantle on him. When that mantle came upon him, everything changed. And I want you to know that if Elisha missed that moment, and if he didn't pick it up and run after Elijah, he would have missed it. I'm prophesying to somebody, there's something greater for you. There's something greater in you. God has prepared great things for your life. Don't wait. Don't say it will be later, it will be another day. Today is the day. Get to it. You don't need faith for the comfortable, for the practical, for the historical. You need faith when you step out with something new that God's releasing on your life. Thunder, what an incredible man of God I got to spend time with. He just spoke about the prophetic, and it's all about the prophetic. But listen, switching lanes for a second, I want to actually jump into a conversation I had with Michael Swain from Freedom of Religion South Africa, because a lot of stuff's been happening in South Africa, and I'm sure in all the nations of the world with what's happening, and with our government regulations and going into the different levels that we've had, and yet the implications for churches. So I had a bit of a chat with Michael, because he's been quite busy behind the scenes working extremely hard in making sure that the voice of the church is heard. So come with me for a few moments while I spend some time with Michael Swain where he breaks everything down so we can get an in-depth understanding of the implications and things that are happening right here and important for us to know as a nation. Well, today I've got the privilege and honor of speaking to Michael Swain from Freedom of Religion South Africa. Michael, great to have you joining us right here on Behind the Faith. Brilliant. Lovely to be with you again. Well, Michael, let's jump straight into it. I know that you recently had a conversation with religious leaders across South Africa. Uh, briefly share with us what were the outcomes or what you can share with us from that meeting. Well, obviously the religious community is very concerned that we've now moved to lockdown level two, but the same restrictions are still in place that have basically been there for a while. Uh, particularly the limitation of a maximum of 50 people meeting in a religious gathering, very strict safety or health sanitation, etc., social distancing. And that is all very understandable because clearly this pandemic is a serious issue. Mm. 
But the reality is, is that the religious community is seemingly being treated with a very different standard by government than other sectors of the community. So for example, where you have uh, taxis operating 100%, airlines the same, uh, railways 70%, uh, you know, shopping centers are open, car parks are full. You know, th there are so many other places where people are obviously a, a, a assembling together, and yeah. yet somehow churches are specifically a far more dangerous place. And we don't necessarily say that people should meet together or should go to church, or even that churches should reopen. But what we're very concerned about is the apparent inequitability of the standards which yeah. government are applying to the religious sector specifically. Michael, in your conversation with uh, these various religious leaders and leaders around the country, um, are there any specific things that you would be able to share with us? I know it's still the early stages um, around what um, we as the community, the church community can expect or look forward to. Well, I think it is true to say that there is a great sense of discontent amongst the religious sector because of the disparity of treatment. And, and obviously the, the, the deep concern is that, of course, the longer one remains locked down as a church, the less able the church is to function effectively to actually serve the very constituencies and, and the members that it actually serves. So th th that is something which is concerning. But the good news is that we did receive actually yesterday after the meeting notification that the president has invited 4SA uh, to be one of the participants at a meeting which will be held this coming Wednesday. So we're looking forward to that. And obviously we're certainly hoping that governments uh, are, the government is open uh, to hearing the concerns and to uh, reasonably treating the religious community so that we can have the same opportunities as other sectors of the society to potentially reopen and therefore, of course, to become more effective. Thank you very much, Michael, for this brief update on what's happening. Um, one last thing I want to just add on there. What can we do, like every sing, everyday people watching right now, how can we get involved? How can we support? How can we be a part or be involved in what you guys are doing in fighting for religious freedom? I think very importantly, stay informed. Mm. Uh, you know, we have a website, uh, www.4sa.org.za. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, Freedom of Religion SA. And stay informed of these issues because, you know, ignorance is truly not bliss. And yeah. it, it is obviously important to know that we specifically are dedicated and daily fighting to protect and promote our religious freedom rights and to ensure that the faith community is given equal treatment in all these issues. Well, thank you very much, Michael. And I know a lot of people are going to connect to you guys on social media as well as on your website. Thank you for your time. God bless. And we continue to pray and stand with you guys as you fight the good fight of faith. Thank you so much. And look forward to the next time. We'll give you an update as soon as we have one. Yes, we will definitely have a conversation as soon as we have an update. Thank you very much. Wow, what an exciting conversation with you and Michael Swain Bande. It is so encouraging and really inspiring to know that there are leaders who are being engaged. It's so good to know that Michael and the team are actually engaging the president concerning issues of faith, concerning issues of religion overall in our nation. This is exciting. To say that we have learned a lot this week would be an understatement. There's just so much that's happening in the Faith Family of Networks and I know you have been impacted as well so so much learned but wait there's more you know what it's incredible Tundra you're right there is so much more because we're actually going to be chatting with Michael again about some regulations that are coming out next week and so you got to look forward to that as well so that's going to be incredible for people to con to focus on as well as an update of well what happened when you guys spoke with the president a week later after that so that I'm also looking forward to but listen guys it's so incredible that there's so much happening right here on the Faith Family of Networks and it's all because of your faithful partnership you as partners have been connecting with 
with us on a regular basis. And as a result of that, we are able to actually bring information so that you are informed and connect with organizations like Freedom of Religion South Africa and have content and programmers like Kenneth Copeland and, and Edgar Holden, as well as Pastor Jacques van der Vestes and, and just great men and women of God who are connected to this network. Don't forget to connect with us regularly on our social media platforms. Email us if you want to send us some mail or snail mail. You can send us snail mail as well. Contact our prayer center number. Everyone is waiting just to speak to you. And Tando, that's the beauty of it. We're a family and we're here to stand and pray together. And listen, talking about the family standing and praying together, you know you want to be a part of these exciting days with Faith Today with Drs. Andre and Jenny Rabbit, as well as Pastor Nikki and Lillian van der Vestes. And it has been a feast from, you know, when there was the break with the Revival Week and now back to our visionary leaders. It is powerful. Yeah, it's an incredible time. And don't forget, you cannot miss it every Sunday. At 9 a.m., Pastor Kevin and the team from Faith Worship will be giving you a now word, praise and worship, an incredible time right there in the presence of the Lord. Well, until next time, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and give you peace. And on behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny Rabbit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you always. Shalom.